Good morning, guys. My name is Phil. Welcome back to Miranda Detailing. Welcome back to our detailing life. Yeah. So in today's episode, we are actually working on this Lexus ES model, and it's a pretty simple job today. All we have to do is our Onyx Paint Protection Service. If you're interested in that service or you just want to know what is included, check out the links down below, it goes right to our website, and you'll see the three different levels of Onyx services. The Onyx services are exterior only. So it starts with the paint protection, paint enhancement, paint correction. Those are the three levels that we offer. And within those three levels, there can be some variations depending on what the customer needs. Um, and the pricing there is also something that can not necessarily be negotiable, um, but starting prices at, and then customers can add things onto them. It's really about what the customer needs and what their budget is. So sometimes with paint enhancements, they can go a little bit over, not quite full correction, um, but not just a simple polishing, somewhere in between. That all depends on communicating with the customer. So let's take a look around this ES, this Lexus, and uh, we'll get started on it. And you see the vehicle behind us, this is a 2020 4Runner. This was just in for our new car prep and ceramic coatings, and we applied G-Technic Crystal Serum Light uh, to, of course, all of the paint. We coated the trim, the glass, the windshield, face of the wheels, and also interior leather and vinyl. So I will have a video on this one on the channel. So let's have a look at the Lexus. It's really not that bad. We have some light dust here, but nothing, nothing too crazy. They can't even focus on it because there's not much on it. Even the wheels and tires, pretty good shape. Don't know if this is really driven that much. So we'll wash it, we'll decon it. Um, usually the clay mitt, the clay bar, um, the wheels really are not that bad. So is there a need to use iron and tar deconning chemicals? Well, that's up to you and what you see on the paint. This is our paint protection. So this is a um, kind of an entry level you know, wash, clay bar, or decon, and then a sealant applied. Typically your wash and wax is what some people would call it. We go a little further, of course. We decon the paint, we clay bar it. That's what I mean by decon, it's a mechanical decon. And if we need to use chemical, we can, but generally we don't on these. This gray is also a nice forgiving color. I know it has some swirls in it, I can see it up close, but yeah, it's really not too bad. So let's get started. You'll see our wash process, especially our pre-wash process. That's the rinsing, the APC rinsing. If you wanna learn more about that, click the card. And that will remove the majority of the traffic film and really soften up everything. And usually when we do the APC rinse, that gets, I don't know, roughly 50% of the grime kind of stripped from the paint. And then we can go to foaming it and contact washing it. The APC or the pre-rinsing stage is very important, we have found for us. Uh, we found that that really preps the paint before you contact wash it. It gets the majority of any damaged material, heavier grit and grime, off the paint completely, not damaging anything. You're just using the pressure of the water. It's not grinding into the paint or anything like that. Grinding into the paint happens when you do contact washing. Um, so the pressure washer is going to remove all that stuff. And the pressure washer that we use, I know some have been asking, we just use this, this little cheap home decks or home docks um, that we have you know, hooked up in the corner here. I will be upgrading this uh, to the AR Blue, I believe the 630 hot version, which I have in my trailer, but I will be bringing it over here. Um, so I'm going to redo this corner eventually. But that little guy only puts out around 1,000, maybe 1,100 PSI. So not very powerful, but it's enough to clean safely without worrying about damaging anything. So that's what we use for our pressure washer right now. And even the AR Blue, it only puts out about 13 PSI. I think I've, I've uh, rated it as. So again, that's still really not too bad. That's just enough pressure to be able to remove all the junk from the paint. So let's get started. So guys, check this out. We just got this from the detail guards. This is their new dirt lock 
I think it's like the 360 series. This thing is incredible. Check this out. I know it's it's not quite fitting in this bucket. This is an, an unusual, you know, type of bucket, but I just like it. I put it on here for my wash bucket. Uh, but this would actually fit better in a typical five gallon bucket because it's, you know, raised up like this. But this is basically a complete grit guard or dirt lock. Sorry, detail guards, not grit guard, dirt lock for your buckets. Now check this out. We have the new version down below here. I'll, I'll pull this out after we're done washing and show you what this looks like uh, down below. Um, it actually has the little grip, uh, little rubber grips here that are improved so that they bite onto the bottom of the bucket way better than uh, the older versions. So this snaps all together and it forms basically a barrier and a layer you know, so that there's an inside layer here of the bucket. All the dirt and junk will go into the side here, all the way to the bottom, and it will not get swirled back into the water at all. So you get your wash mitt after you're done a few panels, and you rub it against the sides here, and you can see how it'll push dirt and grime into those little slots there, those little grooves, and it will go all the way down to the bottom. Pretty awesome design. I mean, that is hefty duty. That is the best dirt lock design or basically grit separator design that I've ever seen. That's impressive. So I know it looks a little goofy in this bucket, but in a typical five gallon bucket, it'd be awesome. Man, I wish um, that they could make complete transparent buckets, regular five gallon. I don't know why they can't do that. But uh, if you want links to clear buckets like this from Detail Division, I'll have links down below. You know how long it's been since we've done a car? I know. I know. Yep. Oops, forgot to fill up my soap bucket. I mean, my soap thingy the jiggy. Woo, just enough. I don't know what happened. Can you feel grittiness? Good. The sides aren't bad, you said? Do you think the bottom's worse? Soap? What? Soap?
So we applied the Turtle Wax Hybrid Solutions Pro to the Max Wax. Uh, that's a pretty heavy duty sealant. And when we apply it, we also need to remove it in a, in a specific way. Um, at least we have learned that we use a damp towel and a dry towel. That's just the nature of the product. It is a graphene infused uh, product. And uh, basically it's a ceramic type of sealant. So it had about, eh, probably about five minutes now to dry. Damp towel, dry towel. If you just use a dry towel, it's really not gonna come out the way that you want. This is just the method that we have found that works best for us. If you're indoors, it might be a little bit more user-friendly, but um, eh, still we found that you need a damp towel or a spritz of water, either would work. It works well with water, so you don't have to worry about it impeding durability or anything. Nice, there we go. I wonder if we hear the baboons doing that, if it's, um, or the monkeys, whatever they are, if it's like their feeding time. Oh, right. And they get all excited. Could be. Or their mating time, who knows. <laughs> what, the monkeys? They're doing that. Yeah, I hear it all the time. I just thought it was birds of some sort. Yeah, I'm like, why does it sound turkeys. like monkeys? Now we know. Yep. <laughs> Lexus is done and it looks beautiful. Now, how long did it take us? Well, we started kind of late, probably around uh, 9.20 or so, maybe 9.30. It is just about 10.30 now. So roughly an hour, that's with two people. So if you're alone, maybe up to two hours, depending on the condition of the paint. But we are seasoned detailers. We have a method and a technique down um, so well that we can move very quickly, very efficiently, and get the job done. So, it's looking beautiful. Tires and wheels, cleaned, protected, and the paint is looking pretty awesome. Now, no polishing or anything like that. Just, you know, sealant application with a polisher, a dual action polisher, that really boosts the gloss, and it will remove any minor marring that was left behind from the clay mitt. Yeah, it looks awesome. This thing's ready to go. Let's show you what's going on in the detail lounge. Beep boop, beep boop, beep boop. All right, so we're coming along. I did some work this past week and we framed the inside of the door here. So, whoops, there we go. So that's looking great. I have to put just uh, another coat of trim paint around here and do some caulking of the finish nail holes and caulk all around here. Seal that all in. This is not drywall. This is just the plywood. And I actually kind of like the look. It just kind of frames everything in. We did some minor um, repair here on the cinder block that's down here. I had to fill in that area. So once we take this blocking off, uh, we'll just paint all of the cement. It has a weird like border all around the bottom here. So when we put the cabinets in, it's gonna be kind of weird. So I had to buy some two by fours. 
And when we put the cabinets, instead of mounting them on the wall, that'll make kind of a weird, you know, uh, lifting up of the cabinets and then the little rolling carts are not gonna fit under there correctly if it's mounted to the wall because we have about a four inch, you know, variant here. So what we're gonna do is put them on the ground and just put two by fours and frame around and bolt everything to the two by fours to the wall. So everything will be secured and bolted to the wall, but it'll be out, you know, of the wall about four inches with the two by fours. And I'll paint them black and it'll all blend in. So you'll see that when we start doing it. So I'm going to clear some of this out. Uh, put some stuff upstairs, put some stuff in storage. I'm going to paint these two walls, paint all the trim and the doors there, get that going, and uh, remove that thing too. So you may see some of that today. We'll see how much I can get done. wall is not finished this is just first coat um, but the cabinets are going to go across the wall here so I'm not going to go crazy with finishing perfectly here um, I'll probably do a second coat you know here and maybe along the top where the cabinets you know are gonna go there's gonna be a, a, a space up there um, but yeah for the most part that's pretty much that's pretty much it so this wall is painted here the trim is painted this is all locked in. I actually have to paint this still, but it's first coat, so that's good. Um, oh yeah, look, I got a mirror up. Now, I'm just waiting for patches to dry on this wall over here. I had some pretty nasty holes from where I removed the propane space heater. So I just curled back the um, propane pipe here, and that's just gonna stay there um, and, and not move. Um, the cabinets will go right up against there. There'll be a, a, a space there that I might block in. But I have an outlet there. I have three outlets along this wall, which is awesome. And I know, I painted that one. I'm not worried about painting these ones because they're going to go underneath the cabinet. Um, so that's looking good. And check these out. These are the um, piping that we're going to use for shelving across here. So I have these boards, which are just painted. And one is going to go across here. Actually, one and two will go across there. I might get these same ones and put them up here. They look really nice against the black. Yeah, that looks really cool. So this might go up here also. And I'll put a shelf along here. So yeah, it's coming along. Um, I'm waiting for those cabinets and the floors to come in any, any week now, either this week or next. And I have the, um, the board here, which will go behind the cabinets. You know, I have the, the cabinets mounted on the wall up above. I'll have the wood shelf down below that's about six feet across. So I'm gonna have a two by six section in the middle where I'm going to put this. And I'll paint this all black so it all blends in. And we'll have outlets there, we'll have lights. It'll look really nice, that way I can put little holders on this, display product, whatever I need to do. Um, so yeah, looking pretty awesome. Now I'm using all flat paint here just because it's easier to cover over. Um, and if I need to touch up anything, I can touch up just small areas. That's the beauty of flat paint. I usually use eggshell, but flat paint will look really nice in here. Now I also have my sound panels coming in today. Don't know if they'll make it for the video or not because I'll be finishing up this video very soon. So I don't know if they're going to make it in time, but you'll see them eventually. I have gray and red hexagon sound paneling coming in to hopefully deaden some of the echo. Yeah, you can kind of hear, I don't know if you can hear it with the snaps, but pretty echoey in here. And I might actually have a few sound panels on the ceiling because we have such high ceilings here. I'm going to put a ceiling fan here I have coming in tomorrow. 
and some other lights up here. Oh yeah, replace that light there. That looks much better there, my little coffee corner. So yeah, lots of cool stuff. Working on this today, having some fun. This is something that I really enjoy. So you'll see this really come along once we get the floors and the cabinets. It's gonna be fantastic. Well, the Lexus is gone, so customer is very happy. I still have the Forerunner in here because it's supposed to threaten rain today. It's supposed to be a thunderstorm. So we're possibly gonna have to hold this until Wednesday. So here it is at least. I didn't get any sun shots, unfortunately but I put the uh, bug deflector back on and it is looking gorgeous. So let's show you the new Dirt Lock 360 Dirt Lock thingamajiggy here. Let me, let me show you exactly what it's called because I need to tell you exactly what this thing is because <laughs> I need to. The Dirt Lock attachment scrub wall, either 180 or 360. So it comes in four sections. Um, but you usually get two sections per package. So you can either just do one side or do all around. I chose to do all around um, just because it's an interesting concept because um, everything now is locked in place. Once that dirt gets into there, it's going to the bottom and it's not going into the water again. So it's the same design, same little slat design as the bottom here. You can see this too. You see the, the bottom there. Let me, let me lift this thing up so you can really see up close. You see the slats there? That allows it to lock into place in the bucket. Very, very cool. Much better design than the last one. Instead of just having just the little rubber tabs, these lock it in place. And once everything shoves down into the bucket, it really does lock and it does not come up. It doesn't float. It doesn't do any of that. So, um, oh, and look, these, I'm doing this one-handed, so bear with, actually come off. See? These little tabs, they just go in the bottom of the feet. So the design of the Dirt Lock is still the same. It's just these little additions. What an awesome company. See, this company innovates. They ask questions from fellow detailers, what's working, what's not, and then they fix problems and add more um, solutions to their products. So that's amazing. I love when, when detail companies do that. There are some companies that are so big that they don't take any suggestions. They just stick with what they have and that's it. They have their product testers, whoever they are, but you know, sometimes they need to think outside the box. Give these products, put them in the hands of real detailers who have businesses um, and let them test the products out in the real world and see how they really work. So, so far, this is such an awesome design. Very, very cool. And once it fits in the bottom here, it's nice and snug. Yeah, very, very cool. What an awesome design. So just to demonstrate again quickly, you have your wash mitt and you can just work it down the sides. You don't have to have that pump in here. I have the pump. You can too, pump it down there and it'll go to the bottom. But now you have the option. You can scrub the sides and release all the junk in the microfiber and have nice clean microfibers. That's one option. I know many other guys, um, actually my friend Tony Ralda, he's got a very easy way of rinsing, uh, doing his wash process and rinsing his mitts. He just has multiple mitts and he just rinses them out. He foams the vehicle like we do and he will wash a panel or two and then just take his pressure washer because it's running and just rinse it out and put it in the bucket, grab another one, and just keep doing and just, just keep rotating and rinsing. That's another method, awesome method, it works. So whichever works for you, that's quick and efficient, and uh, that's really the name of the game. If it works for you, you're making money, it's efficient, then stick with your plan. If you wanna deviate and try something else, go ahead, but you'll probably go back to the plan that works for you or the method that works for you. Very cool. So I was just watching uh, Ammo NYC, Larry Casella's videos. Very enjoyable to watch. Um, and the one that he just put out, I'll put it in the card here, is he was working on a, a Ferrari, the P45, one of his dream cars to detail, pretty awesome. But now in it, he's working along with two other detailers. So three detailers total working on this vehicle. Now he stops to kind of mention something on the fly that he must be getting comments as well. And he has to, he has to comment. He has to answer these questions and this dogmatic way of thinking that some people have. Uh, he gets a lot of questions asking, what's the best product? What's the best tool? What's the best pad? 
and he can't answer that question directly. And he proves it by asking the other guys that are with him, longtime pro detailers, they're all using different machines, different pads, different products, and most likely different techniques, but they're working on the same car. So the concept there is use what works for you. You have your own methodology, you have your own combo, something that you are comfortable with that just works. Some people like to use the old school Meguiar's uh, M-Line, you know, the M105, the M110, the, the M120, whatever it is, and they make it work. Is it outdated technology? Well, is the person still making money and getting amazing results using those products? Who cares if it's outdated uh, polishing technology or if he's using older pads? It does not matter. The end result matters. And if you're making money and if you're efficient, seasoned pros can use almost any product, any pad, any machine, and still get the results that they want. True, they have their favorites. You know I have my favorite, right? I love my SPTA, I love my Orange Lake Country pads, and I have a certain selection of polishes that I use that I love. Gets me results pretty much every single time, like 90% of the time. Sometimes I need to switch things up and grab another product or switch up a pad or something like that, but it's rare. But I know when to make that call, just like he does. So. Professional detailers know how to use their machines, know how to use their products, so important. So is there a best product or a best pad out there or a best polisher? Can't answer that question directly. That's up to you. So if you're a beginner detailer, learn those techniques. Grab a polisher, grab a pad, grab a product, and use it. And then you make your adjustments from there, whether you need to get more cut or better finish or get used to the machine, whatever it is. New detailers are going to have a learning curve. It's, it's going to take some time until they learn and figure out what works for them. So that's really something. And like Larry says, take that in consideration. You have to think about those things. And uh, when you ask questions, that's how we're going to answer you, is what works best for you. We'll give you our suggestions, but it's not the end all be all. So if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't mean it's wrong. It means it doesn't work for you. So you need to Branch out and, and find your own way, your own method, uh, your own techniques. That's just what, in this field, this is all about. Um, any field does that when it comes to service-based businesses, any cleaning companies, window cleaning companies, um, even plumbers and electricians, they're going to have their favorite tools, carpenters, um, contractors, across the board, any type of service-based business like this, they're going to have their favorites and what works for them, not necessarily the best. Some of the old school contractors will still use some of the older tools and old tricks of the trade that work just as well as some of the new ideas and new things. Um, some of the new people kind of forget the old way of doing things. The old way still works. It's just companies come out with new products and new tools and they think it saves you time and money and all this stuff when sometimes it's just, just marketing. That's sometimes all it is. Sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes that's just the way it is. So. Detailers, new detailers, find out what works for you. Learn from all of us other detailers out here who have been doing this for a long time and take all of our suggestions uh, into consideration, but realize that you are gonna have to find your own way. You are gonna have to find your own way, your own technique, your own combos that work for you. So I wanted to share that information because I saw Larry had to answer it, and I think that's a common trend. A lot of us professional detailers who've been in the game for 10 plus years, he's probably 20 plus years, we understand that and we have to answer the questions now because we're on YouTube, we're in the public eye and people are asking us questions or accusing us of things. We have to clear the air. I always will clear the air. Um, I'm not here for entertainment purposes. Uh, even though the videos may be entertaining, great. I, I do kind of uh, enjoy making them entertaining, but they're also educational and showing you guys what real detailers do in the real world, not just staged details and doing this on on the side as a side gig this is what we do for our business we've been doing this for 12 years and we're going to keep on innovating but also using some of the old techniques that we have always used that are tried and true that work for us so that's why you don't see a lot of review videos on new products and all of that i kind of let that go and let that hype and that trend kind of pass and then i'll try those products or tools or whatever um, the only thing that 
I'm trying to jump on are these new polishers, the SPTA version twos and the other cordless polishers, just because that's my own thing. I love cordless polishers and I'm loving the SPTA. And those things I will buy when they come out because that's just my prerogative, that's my choice. I like to use those polishers and I wanna show how to use them in the real world and how they can go head to head with some of the top boys like Rupes and Flex and all those other ones. Not to say that those are bad machines, but again, personal choice. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss stuff. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great week. Take care.